Okay, so the second half of our, our case study, Temperature Woodland, looks at its uses and management. We can really split the uses in two ways. We can look at economic uses and social uses. So economic-wise, we're looking at things such as timber, and we'll talk about how they do that in a bit, and we're also looking at grazing particularly of a species called uh, the English longhorn cattle in that uh, it's grazed in Epping Forest and then it's uh, used uh, for milk production. Now in terms of social uses, Epping Forest has a golf course. It's also well renowned for its horse riding tracks and also for dog walking. So we can't draw dogs. Dogs end up bigger than the human, but the idea is right. Also, what's a really good use to talk about is the fact that Epping Forest was considered as one of the venues for mountain biking in the 2012 Olympics. It ended up only being used as a training venue, but draw a little bike on there, 2012, 2012. Mind you that it was used as a training venue for mountain biking at the 2012 Olympics. So that's the uses. We then want to look at the management. Now the first management technique links in with our idea of timber because obviously timber is not the most sustainable industry because you're cutting down trees but in Epping Forest they do something called pollarding this is where they cut the tree off kind of at shoulder height where the, the branches uh, sort of leave the main trunk uh, this gives them timber but also the tree is able to grow these branches back so it's a sustainable way of getting timber now on top of that, okay, it's important to remember that Epping Forest is counted, counted as a site of specific scientific interest. Okay? That means that it's actually protected by law. To enforce that protection, we have park rangers working in the forest 365 days a year. They can enforce bylaws to protect it, but they can also educate people on how to make sure they look after the area. Okay? So we can maybe just draw like a little education sign here to remind you that we have education. Another way that they do it is that we see a lot of these educational signposts located along walkways and paths. This keeps people away from the more vulnerable areas of the uh, forest, for example historical earth mounds or areas of, uh, with fragile vegetation or animal life. So the paths keep people away from areas that they, they shouldn't be going in. One other little thing that they do Okay, which is a really nice interesting thing to talk about, is that they designate certain areas for certain activities, so they do zoning. So for example, there are areas where you can light barbecues and fires in Epping Forest, so tourists can still use it and visitors can still enjoy it, but uh, these areas are normally like bricked off, surrounded by stone walls or something like that, to stop the spread of any fire if an accident happened.